How's it going everyone? My name's John, and for those of you who aren't familiar, I'm working on getting my master's degree in clinical mental health counseling. And today, I wanted to look at another one of Dr. Maruki's uh, counseling sessions with one of the Phantom Thieves. And so last time, I talked about his counseling session with On, where we kind of came to the conclusion that in that session, he had a good grasp on counseling techniques, and he just flubbed here and there, but he seemed amateurish at best. And so today, I want to look at his interactions with Ryuji. So if you like this kind of content, you want to see more of this kind of content coming from this channel, then make sure to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you never miss another upload. And really quickly, I wanted to give a big thank you to everyone who showed a crazy amount of support on that last Dr. Maruki video. I'm blown away and just thank you all so much. But without further ado, let's jump into the video. Okay, they're starting just exchanging pleasantries. Here for a counseling session. <laughs> this is this is so perfect. Because this is something it's so based in reality. This is something that a student would probably say, especially a student like Ryuji, who doesn't always have the greatest filter. And so I like this because last time, last session that we looked at with On, she kind of came in, she was trepidatious for sure, but she was pretty easy to open up to Dr. Maruki. And so now we see in sharp contrast that Ryuji is saying, look, I don't want to be here. And as a counselor, this gives a good indicator for how you should approach the session. Ryuji's forced to be here. And Ryuji knows that the only reason that Dr. Maruki came into the school is because the principal wanted it to be good PR. It's not necessarily because they care about the students, especially not from Ryuji's perspective, which understandably so. And so the way Dr. Maruki handles this, saying, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry that you're forced into this, but anyway, come in, come in, kind of saying, let's make the best of a, of a situation that you maybe aren't the greatest fan of. And so I really like uh, I like this interaction because it's it's even it's even minorly starting to build that rapport saying I'm kind of I'm kind of on your side here. I wish you didn't have to be forced into this, but let's make the best of the situation while you're here. So that maybe if they do build a good rapport, maybe Ryuji will come back. And that could be overall beneficial if Ryuji does have some stuff going on inside. Okay, so again, I'm going to assume that this little time skip here that happens with the black brush stroke, that's when the statement of confidentiality happens when Dr. Maruki is laying out, okay, if you're thinking about harming yourself, others, uh, etc., etc., I'm going to have to breach confidentiality so that he and Ryuji are fully on the same page in this session. But if you want to hear my full spiel about confidentiality and why that's so important, make sure to check out my video about his session with On, because I, uh, I think I go into it pretty well in depth there, and I don't want to reiterate myself too much. So let's keep going. <laughs> and then Ryuji just pointing out that this is this is an awkward situation for him and how he doesn't really see teachers or staff or anything unless he's doing something wrong and so i think that dr maruki addresses this really well saying that look i'm i'm not a teacher here if anything i'm on the student's side and so he's building, he's again, building that rapport, starting to try and build the foundations of trust because obviously Ryuji is blatantly mistrustful of him because why should he be trustful of teachers, faculty? He never gets really anything good from them. Uh, Kawakami's always talking to Joker about how he's a bad influence and to stay away from Ryuji. Kamoshida was, well, he was Kamoshida. He broke his leg. He berated him he tried to get him expelled he has no real positive experiences with faculty in this school so now he's supposed to go to a counseling session and open up and talk about all of these issues to someone who's similar 
So Dr. Maruki reads the situation really well here, saying that I am on the student's side. The teachers are over here, but I'm, I'm over here. I want to actually help you. And so Ryuji, he may not necessarily take that at face value or take that to heart quite yet, because it, it's a process. He even says here, so am I supposed to tell you about Kamashida now? That blatant expectation that this is all about talking about Kamashida. And again, Maruki approaches this really well, saying, this isn't some kind of interrogation. He does this a lot better in this session than he did in the last session with On. Because in the last session, when he was starting to open up and open up the session with On, and she started sharing, she started getting ready to share, he says, oh no, 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 you don't have to talk, don't worry, you don't have to talk. And I think that that was kind of a mistake, because she'd already started opening up to him. But he does this at a really opportune moment here, because he says, after Ryuji spouts the expectation that he's supposed to talk about his experiences with Kamashida after everything that happened, he says, oh no, this isn't an interrogation. And if we go a little bit further here, we'll see him say that we can just talk about whatever you want. If you don't want to talk, say a word about Kamashida, you don't have to. We can just chit chat. And I think that that's a really great expectation to set because it allows Ryuji to breathe, let his shoulders down, and maybe ease into potentially if he feels comfortable talking about Kamashida with Maruki. But he doesn't have to. It's not the counselor's position to rip this information out of you forcibly. It's the counselor's role to give you the opportunity and the forum that anything you need to process out once you feel comfortable with the counselor. Feeling comfortable is really important because if you don't, you might feel embarrassed about revealing some things. And so building this relationship with Ryuji just by chit-chatting maybe initially is so, so, so important to good future process. So I'm liking this session. I'm liking the choices Dr. Maruki is making so far. <laughs> and Ryuji says, okay, what do we talk about? And Maruki said, ah, no, 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 you were doing so good. You were doing so good. So, okay, this is, this could just very well be Dr. Maruki's just awkward, quirky kind of nature coming out here, saying, is there anyone in your class that you like? But this is a big red flag with, with a lot of people who you just don't know very well. Prior to this session, he'd only interacted with Ryuji once, and they weren't exactly on the best of terms. Ryuji was kind of uh, less than pleased that he was being forced to see this counselor. And so just diving in, is there anyone in your class you like? That could be a very uncomfortable and awkward conversation that Ryuji would be opened up to in that situation. A lot of high school guys don't want to tell someone they just met about the people that they are romantically interested in. And so as this little scene progresses, he shows that kind of, oh, this is, this is awkward. That's not quite an easy topic either. And Maruki's trying to backpedal. He's saying, oh, you're in the middle of your teenage years. <laughs> it's a funny interaction. And then we get context into Maruki's character. How he says, that's not exactly how it went for me when Ryuji asks. He fell in love with his studies first. So this was a, in my opinion, this was a wildly inappropriate thing for him as the counselor to bring up in this session. I think it's funny. And from a narrative standpoint, I think it's really great at foreshadowing because I'm going to go into a lot of uh, Persona 5 Royal third semester spoilers. So if you don't want any, make sure to click off this video right now. But this alludes to him bringing this out. It kind of feels like he's bringing personal stuff 
into the session. Because we know that Dr. Maruki lost his fiance. He no longer has her in her life, or in his life, I should say. And he did that. He's the one who completely erased him from her cognition so that she could live a happy life. And so he's undoubtedly still dealing that with that so much. We see that later in the game, that he's still really struggling with that loss. And so it feels like bringing up romantic relationships in this is him subconsciously projecting his desires onto Ryuji and wanting to hear how Ryuji is faring in this kind of romantic arena. And you should never bring your personal stuff into a counseling session. And so I think he kind of realizes this when he says, not really, and then he backpedals and says, I fell in love with my studies first. That, oh crap, I'm thinking about this now. I, I, I miss my fiance, but there's nothing I can do to get her back. So I think narratively, I love this. From a counseling perspective, yikes. He could have asked so many better questions in this situation to just have an idle chit chat. Don't bring up romantic relationships off the bat like that. <laughs> and then they're both understandably feeling awkward about this. And I really like how Maruki kind of addresses this. He's the one that brought the personal stuff, whether Ryuji knows that or not, um, into this counseling session. And so he's saying, look, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to be helping you out, but I brought the room down. That's my bad. And so admitting that he is the one kind of at fault here is really, really good because counselors make mistakes and it's really important to be able to admit those mistakes. If he blew past it without even beginning to address that, maybe eh, the awkward air was kind of his fault, which it is then that could still kind of be like, the awkwardness would kind of stay there. But this is kind of humanizing, saying, that's my bad. Maybe this will build a little bit more trust in Ryuji because he's seeing that, oh, he admits his mistakes. The rest of the staff, the rest of the faculty, they never admit ever when they do something wrong, but he's actually admitting it here. And so I really kind of, I like that. Um, and so let's see where it goes from here. And he asks about what Ryuji likes to do in his free time. He should have started with this question. It's so much better because it gives you a more holistic idea of who the client is. While it's a casual, common conversation, you're not prying for information with this, but it still can give you a little bit of insight into the client. And so while Ryuji's talking here, he's saying, I mostly hang out with my friends. Before that, he was really mad all the time. And even before that, he was into track. And that was kind of his whole thing. And so this gives us a lot of information and a lot of talking points to build a conversation around moving forward. Maruki could ask about Ryuji's friends if he wants to really kind of keep the conversation very casual, very light. If he did want to kind of start getting into some stuff with Ryuji, he could ask him, well, why why were you mad? What made you mad all the time? It, you really have to feel the room in that kind of situation. They're kind of already in kind of an awkward place, so I would still say don't dig in too, too deep, but he could, he could potentially say, if you don't mind my asking, what made you mad all the time? If you feel comfortable telling me. Now that gives the client the autonomy to say, I don't really want to talk about it. And then you could say, okay, we don't have to talk about that. Let's talk about your friends. And so I think that at least beginning to see if he can dig into some emotional stuff that Ryuji's dealing with, because he brought it up. So at least he's willing and has that level of trust to bring that anger up. So let's see how Maruki addresses this, uh, where he goes from here. And he just kind of takes the information in. 
where did that come from? So, Ryuji gave a lot, like I just said, a lot that Maruki could have dug into. And so that way, Ryuji could still kind of be leading the conversation. That way, we're talking about things that Ryuji has already told us. So you could have dug into his anger. You could have dug into his friends if you wanted to keep it a little bit more platonic. But he completely segues from this and asks, how's your leg doing right now? And I think that there's a very logical reason for this in terms of the story, and that is Maruki hates negative emotions. He never tackles them head on, which honestly, that's not a great trait for a counselor to have in general. <laughs> uh, avoiding negative emotions and running from negative emotions, not exactly something that a counselor should be promoting, but Ryuji brings up that he was mad all the time. And so Maruki completely segues to the topic so, how's, how's your leg doing? Is, is it any better? Ryuji never brought that up. Ryuji never brought that up. And so, let's say, let's, let's say that he didn't, he, he had no idea that Kamashita was involved with breaking Ryuji's leg. Well then, how does he know this? Well, it's probably in school records. But how do you know that this isn't a soft spot for Ryuji, who just said he was all about track, he was mad all the time, and then now he's hanging out with his friends. I'm sure Maruki knows that the track team had been disbanded. And so that broken leg might be a sore spot for Ryuji. You probably shouldn't bring it up if you're not necessarily even supposed to know it at this point. But let's say that he did know that Kamashita broke Ryuji's leg. I mean, that that's a safe assumption. He knows, I'm sure, that Kamashita was the advisor for the track team. There was an incident, and then the track team went kaput. And so, now you run the risk of triggering Ryuji, because that could be a very sore subject that he doesn't want to talk about. And so, this runs the risk of aligning yourself back with the school system, back with the administration, because you got this information from them, not from Ryuji. Or you run the risk of triggering Ryuji if this was a really traumatic event. I don't see really any benefit about asking about his leg when they were already starting out with a good conversation about what he does in his free time. Uh, okay. And so... Even Ryuji's a little bit off-put that, oh, oh, you know about that too. Saying, oh, I maybe he didn't necessarily want Maruki to know about that. It, it's probably a point uh, of sadness and contention in his life. And so he says, yeah, it's, it's doing better as long as he doesn't strain it or anything obviously kind of wanting to shift away from the subject and so he uses a a minimal encourager a little you know i see and and then he he he, he keeps with the running thing you really enjoy running don't you and i guess he i can see where he got that but again it feels like he's deflecting away the negative emotions trying to focus only on the positive you could see from the, the low portrait, we don't get voice inflection, we don't get a lot of non-verbals from these scenes just because of the way they are. Uh, we can't see facial features, but from the portrait, it looks like Ryuji is a little bit sad about the situation. And so he's deflecting, again, those negative emotions. Oh, we don't do negative here. That's his whole shtick in his final palace is that he wants everyone to have these idyllic lives with no negativity, no sadness, and he will manipulate the world to do so. And so this is really narratively telling, but from a counseling standpoint, it's not great because he's not actually digging into any of these negative emotions. He's just blowing past them when he could and should be, you know, maybe asking a little bit more about that. He brought up the broken leg, you can't change that. So since Ryuji shared that, why not ask and get a little bit more information and maybe 
process through that so ultimately you can give tools and resources that might be able to help Ryuji if he is st still feeling some of that anger. But no, he just says, you, re you really do enjoy running, don't you? <sighs> okay. And so he says, I guess so, after all that training. Uh, yeah, it, it would make sense that he would like it. And he, he talks about, it seems like he, I might be reading into this, but it seems like he's talking like he kind of misses it and how he was hoping to get that running scholarship to make life easier for his mom. So he's, again, kind of having that feeling of loss saying that's all in the past now and that he's got more important stuff to do. And so Maruki says, more important. I would assume that he would ask, oh, what would that be? Kind of, since he made a note to bring up that he has more important stuff. So again, there's a crossroads here. Does he talk about kind of what was happening in the past or the more, the more important stuff that Ryuji brought up? And he, he just keeps focusing on the track dreams and that he hopes that they'll still do him some good in the things. Now, I don't have an inherent sense the conversation has gone here. Everything's in the past. If you make a mistake, you, you do have to continue moving forward with the session, trying to bring a positive. And so I don't have necessarily an issue with that since that's where we're at in the session now. Because it's saying, I hope the best for you. I, I know that things aren't doing great. He's aligning himself with Ryuji again. I just wish that the path to that <laughs> was a little bit better. He could have done a lot of really valuable processing up to that point, and he just kind of had jerky changes in subject that he dictated, not the client. He's completely leading the conversation. Ryuji's kind of just answering his questions. And so that comment about this isn't an interrogation. Well, it's just kind of turning. It's not a conversation now. It's just question, answer, question, answer. And so he says that, you know what they say, if you wish hard enough, your dreams can come true. Kind of like an emotion, a motivational thing. And even Ryuji says, are you trying to sell me come some kind of line now? And now we're seeing some of Maruki's ulterior motives because he's bringing in his cognitive science background and information giving, saying that this is a genuine phenomenon in a lot of research that that I'm doing is going into it even right now. And it's, it's trying to figure out what Ryuji wants more than anything. And he kind of honed in on the track thing, like, oh, this has to be what Ryuji wants. And so he even directly asks for his purposes of, yo, if I do figure out how to change everyone's cognitions to be completely positive, what do you want most out of life? He, he kind of latches onto the track as we see later in, in, the, in the game, but what do you want most out of life? <laughs> And then they kind of have this this funny little interaction. I think having just nice conversation with clients is always kind of a good thing. It's a quirky conversation where he says, well, I have a free coupon. This proves it. You know, haha, <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. If you want something, it'll end up happening. <laughs> and Ryuji kind of <laughs> looks at the coupon and it's just like, okay. And essentially says Marky is a strange dude. And so this this counseling session, while it shows how profoundly nice Maruki is as a counselor and how he is able to build a good rapport, being surprised that Ryuji is ending on kind of a, a good note, like a like a compliment coming from Ryuji. 
they seem to end out pretty well. So he had, he did succeed in building a good rapport with Ryuji. It seems like Ryuji had an okay time in this counseling session. But in terms of counseling itself, I... The session with On and with Ryuji are like night and day. He did really well. He made a couple mistakes here and there with On, where he used good counseling techniques. He used, uh, he really kind of let her express what was going on. He would use mammal encourage. He did pretty well. He just felt like an amateur or a new counselor. In this session, he brings his own personal stuff and kind of projects that onto Ryuji a little bit in terms of, oh, do you have a crush on anyone? It's a small thing, but it happens. And then he is getting his, he, he deflects away from any and all negative emotions that could be, that could be troubling Ryuji. He doesn't try to dig in to anything deeper. And it, it doesn't feel like it's for rapport building's sake. It just feels like the whole time in that second half of the counseling session, he's digging for what Ryuji wants the most so that when he does eventually create this idyllic world, he can give that to Ryuji. So he, as a counselor, you're supposed to provide your clients with the ability to and the equipment to solve their own stuff, to go out into the world and be able to to cope with the situations that that come at them or that have come at them in the past. And he never does that. He just wants to fix the problems for them so that they never have to worry about that. And so that's not empowering Ryuji. That's not empowering the client. And that should be your role. Whether it takes eight weeks, it's a shorter span of counseling, or if it takes three years for it to really affect, or longer, or shorter, whatever it might be, your role is to provide them those resources. And Maruki just doesn't seem to have an interest in that. And I think that does kind of stem from, this is a backup career. He never wanted to be a counselor. He wanted to be a cognitive scientist. And he wants to use the metaverse to solve everyone's issues. And so I think that this early in the game, this is awesome foreshadowing, looking back at what his objectives really are. But I hate that it came at the cost of actual good counseling. But credit to the, the, the narrative designers of this game, because they wrote him so perfectly as someone who's using counseling as this backup. Uh, as this backup. And this is why I love Dr. Maruki as a character because, well, sometimes he's a better counselor, like with the situation with On, where he makes a couple flubs. We show sessions like these more so show his true, his true colors. And so I think that they wrote him really, really well at being a eh, counseling 101 level of counselor. But those are just my thoughts. And whether you agree, whether you disagree, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, why not liking this video, why not subscribing to my channel, and why not even ringing that notification bell so you never miss another upload. And I also started a new series where I kind of dive into characters more in depth from video games and anime called Character Case Studies. So if that's something that interests you, make sure to go check that out as well. But as always, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, a fantastic rest of your week, and why not even a fantastic rest of your month? And I will see you in the next video. Later.